Thank you so much for watching Rift TV. Now this interview is obviously with video, but I don't interview everybody on Zoom. That's why I put it on my Talkin' Rock with Meltdown podcast. We talk to rock artists from all over the genre. So check out Talkin' Rock with Meltdown wherever you get your podcasts. And now to today's video interview. There he is, Jason. It looks like you're in a studio like, uh, like at my house. Nice. Yeah, I knew I kept all this crap behind me for some reason. Do you have cassettes and stuff in the background? I do. I have vinyl uh, and arm's length. I have ridiculous, yeah, cassettes and laser discs. Uh huh. Yeah. And eight track tapes and vinyl and VHS and yeah, stop it. Now, how much uh, vinyl do you have? Oh, I'm I'm not counting, but I have friends who have like house full. Yeah. Like they've had to build onto their house because their vinyl was taken over their house. So then now they have like. You see the house, and then you walk into this other room, and it's a whole nother house because it's all vinyl. <laughs> yeah, I have friends like that. I'm not I'm, that bad. I'm at about five or six hundred, and it's become kind of an addiction. I think I texted you the one day when I found a, a Dangerous Toys album. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was cool. I was listening to that just the other day, and I was thinking to myself, uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Chad Kruger just talked about this, you know, about being canceled. Some of those songs you probably couldn't get away with today, could you? Could you? Well, uh, maybe. I mean, I think that that the lyrics, the tongue-in-cheek lyrics, you have to you have to remember that. I mean, there's thousands of songs being written right now that are not PC, right? That are all about uh, the still keeping the flame of sex, drugs, and rock and roll alive. <laughs> now, I don't. I think that that should always be, uh, no pun intended, a dangerous element in in rock music otherwise it's not really rock music yeah uh, for sure um, yeah i mean i think that if you're gonna write a, a book report on uh you know george washington you know in a boat that's that's great but to that doesn't sound very rock and roll if you were gonna write a song about that so you use metaphors yeah like, like little man in the boat <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a great so, metaphor. You see, you see what I mean. So, I know exactly what you like mean. George Washington, the little man in the boat. I like, <laughs> I really like that story a lot. I like to get real, real close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the little man in the boat. Uh, I, I think Kid Rock had a record called Yodel in the Valley. So, I think I know a little bit about uh -huh. that one. So, yeah, Yodel in the Valley. That that's related to George Washington somehow. <laughs> Um, I think that I think that you know, uh, like I know you're referencing Sport and Woody, or just yeah. even season pleasing, right. or you know, it's all about the chase and uh, what you're dealing with uh, hormonally when you're a young person. It doesn't matter what you are, what gender you are. Yeah, well, you know, it was a different everyone, time. Everyone gets excited and. Uh, I think that people that are growing up and dealing with it are, are nowadays are, are being are taking it serious. And I, I, I'm actually OK with that. Uh, I think everyone should be comfortable with the songs they listen to, but they should also have a sense of humor. Yeah, exactly. I think somewhere along the line, some people may have lost a little bit of the sense of humor. But uh, so listening to some of those old songs, it's like it's like going back and watching like a John Hughes movie almost. Wow. That's I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah, for sure. That's what it was meant to be like. Yeah, it those, goes, takes those, you to a different place. Yeah, those are all those those John Hughes movies are all home runs. Yeah, yeah, no question about it. So, uh, but well, listen, we're, the reason we got you on is to talk about uh, you. Uh, I guess for lack of a better term, have Mike will travel. Is that what you've been doing this year? I don't even know where to start. Uh, well, let's start at the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the year, what was your what, what was like your plan for this for this year? Did you have any? Well, um, like we like, like you and I have, have talked about briefly, and I'll I'll get everybody up to speed in in a nutshell. Uh, I I ha I have a podcast now, and so that that is all year long. That's been keeping me busy. But we only tape mainly on the weekends. Um, and just what time allows, because I have a co-host and I don't go rogue and neither does he. We always we plan it out to where we can both do it. We just do it on Zoom. That's called the uh, Talk Louder podcast, by the way. You got to give it a plug if you're going to bring it up. Right? Talk yeah. Louder podcast. Yeah. Right. And, you know, talklouderpodcast.com. It's on all platforms. 
uh, super fun. We have a lot of my idols on there. We have a, a lot of guests, uh, authors, uh, uh, musicians mainly, of course. Um, yeah, it's been great. We've had some tour managers on there, th stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Industry. Um, anyway, so that was kind of the plan to just do that and do a few to Dangerous Toys shows. Um, or, it was earlier this year we did the cruise. The toys were on the Monsters of Rock. We, we also did, uh, when we got back, we got invited to do Monsters on the Mountain in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So we did that, and then we went down to the valley and played down there, uh, the Rio Grande Valley, Texas. And mm -hmm. uh, that was fun. And, and so, you know, that's like dabbling. And then I'm yeah, in Those a, are like one-off shows. That's not like a tour. Yeah. No, it's not. They are one-off shows. They're fly-in date kind yeah. of stuff. And, uh, and then, like I said, the podcast and the toys. And then I've got other bands. I'm in a thousand bands, people, yeah. people know. But uh, I... Uh, so, you know, I'm doing that locally a little bit and I have a day job too. So I've been teaching for 16 years for a corporate company called the School of Rock. Mm. And so uh, during the lockdowns and stuff, we had to figure out how to teach our students online because we didn't have that. We didn't offer that. And now we offer that. So that's good for a company. It's just a company, another arm on the monster, right? So yeah, uh, figured out how to do that. And that's when... That was, you know, a couple of years ago now, of course. And during that whole time, hence this setup that you complimented. Yeah. Uh, that this is, it just ended up being, okay, well, I might as well have a podcast. I have all this crap set up. So, and you got all this crap in your brain too, right? So you got to get right. it. Yeah. Right. And that's been healthy as well. So, yeah. working on my stutter, you know, <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the other things that, that were happening this year, it's just, other than the podcast and learning how to teach online over the past couple of years, it's just been regular do some shows here and there. I mean, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm busy enough and, mm -hmm. and feeling blessed uh, at that. You know, I don't feel more deserving than anybody else, you know, Oh, I didn't have a big enough hit, so I can't do a tour and, you know, milk people's wallets and I can't, you know what I mean? It, I didn't, you know, the toys are the, is the most popular group I, I've been involved with. And mm -hmm. it, you know what I mean? It did. Yeah. It's a gold record, a couple gold records, but it you guys did pretty quite, well. Yeah. You guys could hop on okay. a tour somewhere. It, it did, did okay. But well, I, I'll, I'll tell the truth. I got nothing to hide. I mean, I'm an old man and I can tell the world. It's like, you know, we didn't sell enough records to be able to sustain making the money to do a real tour and come back and go, wow, we're in the green, you know? Well, what about uh, hopping on a tour with someone like Armored Saint did, for example? Can't, can't, still can't garner, can't right. ask for the, the right amount of money f to pay to, for it. when I get home, I'm not in the red. Got you. Okay. Fair enough. Can't, it can't happen because of what I keep saying. Just, okay. and I'm not, uh, I'm not angry about it. I don't, you know, I, I take what I get. Right. So, uh, I'm cool with all that living in, you know, central Texas and uh, just, just having fun playing rock and roll and writing, writing songs and recording and releasing records. I release about two records a year and, uh, it's, it's been great. I'm busy, busy, busy. I'm busy enough, but I make more money staying home. If that makes any sense. No, it does. Yeah, for sure. Especially in these times. Now there's all sorts of bands. They're not going on tour, like for example, in Europe or whatever, because it just isn't financially feasible. Uh, with the way things are going in the world, but you're talking you kind of a little bit of a different aspect, but I get that. So you're, you're at, I don't know if you're at home or you're teaching or you're doing whatever. And also do you get a call from, uh, from Wolf? Uh, yeah. The, uh, Mark from, from except everyone, a lot of people know, if you don't know you're, you don't like rock and roll in my opinion, but Mark, uh, came down with an upper respiratory, uh, infection of some kind. Mm. Uh, bless his heart and uh and sang a few shows with that affliction and was in danger of or in fear of as he should be every singer should be uh of of you know doing some potential uh irreparable damage and um they they had a they they played a show in toronto this would have been like first or second week of october yeah they played a like show that. here too yeah in detroit yeah, they did. Uh, they did uh, Toronto without a singer, 
like okay. Mark is Mark is on the bus or he or he went home or whatever, but they did a show where the rhythm section sang. Uh, and they did it cool because they came out before the show and they got the mic. And I don't know if it was Wolf or whoever, but they were like, look, Mark is da da da. We want to play and you're already here and we're here and I'm here. Wouldn't that make this our time, Mr. Hand? <laughs> you know? uh, and so they played a show and the fans were grateful and um, they did. They canceled one. So they did the Toronto. They, they canceled one show because they didn't want to sing again the band didn't want to sing again mm. and so that's two down and then they had a couple of days off i think and they had decided well mark go to the doctor and the doctor's saying no you need to chill and take these pills and kind of a thing right and so they called this guy ed aborn who i consider a buddy now uh, in Florida, and he's friends with Wolf. And Ed Aborn, just to give cred, he is a drummer in an, in an 80s metal band called uh, Siren. And there's a movie people can watch that's oh, called, like, I'm Getting Too Old for This Shit. Yeah, it, like yeah. That. Is, that the, is that the band from Arizona or something? No, they're from Florida. Florida, that's right. Yeah, I they're, saw they're, that. They're that's called the Chris they're Jericho called... made. Correct. Yeah, That's correct. I, I should have given, yeah. given credit to Chris. But yeah. anyway, yeah. Uh, so, so that's Ed Aborn, the drummer. Yeah. He's basically yeah. the narrator and the main guy in the film. Uh, I'm getting too old for this shit. Yeah. And the movie's about where they get a call a thousand years after they've already, you know, bought a house and had kids and yay, happy life. And I'm a, I'm a computer programmer and the phone rings. Hello. Yeah. Calling from Germany. Can you get your band back together from a thousand years <laughs> ago and come play the keep it true festival? It's that's like, right. what, uh, <laughs> Ed Aborn gets a call from Wolf. Hey, uh, I got, I need a fill in guy. Who do you know? Ed Aborn is friends with the guys in riot. He calls Todd, uh, singer for riot and says, Hey, can you do this? And can't, can't do it. Todd calls Donnie Van Stavern bass player for riot who lives in San Antonio, who has been a friend of mine since 1983. Hmm. Uh, Don calls me and says, Hey, can you sing except? And I'm like, what is this a trick? When are we forming our tribute band? Because <laughs> dummy, you know that I love Accept and I can sing the crap out of Accept. So what are you talking about? And he goes, well, the singer, blah, blah, blah. Call this guy. Gives me Ed Aborn's phone number. I call Ed Aborn. I'm like, what? what's going on? And he tells me the skinny. And I said, okay, well, I don't, God, I'm freaking out, right? It's like, because I worship Accept. I love Accept. It's my high school playlist. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, especially the old stuff, obviously. And, right. um, so yeah, uh, I send Ed a couple of, uh, songs of me singing except because I've covered except on worldwide releases, uh, fast as a shark with my band igniter and run if you can with my band watchtower. Yeah. And those both, uh, I sent both of those to Ed. He immediately forwarded them straight to Wolf. And then the phone rings and it's Wolf. Now, did you, did you, did you know Wolf at all? No. Okay. No, I went to an in-store on the Balls to the Wall tour and like was like, oh my God, I'm standing in the same room with Accept. Wow. Oh my God. You know, and I, I think I gave Udo a, a cassette tape. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, of, of, of me, of, of my old band Watchtower. Uh, you know, a demo or something. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, I, and I, I saw except back in the day, a bunch of times and dangerous toys actually did two shows supporting except, uh, in 89 when they had Dave Reese singing. Okay. And, uh, it was right after Udo, I think, or a few years after Udo. Or right. Whatever. And, uh, uh, we played Colorado Springs and we played Salt Lake city with except. And neither time you had a chance to talk with them. No. Okay. No, watched them sound check. Oh man, except you know what? It was killer. I was fan, fanboy, total fanboy. And uh, so now, fast forward a thousand years later, and here I am on the phone with Wolf, and I'm like, "Whoa, <laughs> uh, dude, I'm fan. Uh, it's an honor to talk to you, sir." <laughs> Everything was yes, sir. You know, kind of shit for a second. So anyway, um we start talking about logistics and I was still, I was under the weather. I was getting over some kind of upper respiratory infection 
and I still wasn't a hundred percent. And I, and I, I told him that straight up because I didn't want to waste anyone's time. So I'm really on the fence with this stuff. And, um, he goes, well, I'll tell you what, we, we need someone bad and we don't want to cancel anymore because dude, th let's just put this on the table. If the crew, if you cancel a series of dates, a tour, right. the rest of the tour, you know, what it, it open ended, whatever, if, if two shows, five shows, the crew doesn't work. You go home. No one makes money. Right. You, you dog out and you have to make those shows up. It's a financial blotto. You know, it's like, pfft, right. So you're in Texas right now. Where are they? Yeah. yeah they're in, uh, they're in Pennsylvania. Somewhere. Okay. They're in Allentown, actually. And when's the next show and, and where is that at? So so I got a call I got the call, the call quote, at about noon on uh the October eighteenth. Okay. Okay. I think that was three days after the Detroit show. Yep. Okay. So October eighteenth, I got the call. Nineteen hours later I was on a plane. Uh, studying cheat sheets on the, on the plane during my layover. Uh, I got to the hotel in Allentown, in, you know, somewhere outside of Allentown, uh, uh, about midnight. Okay. Traveling all day. Cause my flight was like 7 AM mm -hmm. and I was just, the, that's only, you know, they were hustling and bustling to find me flights. And so they got, they got me a long layover and, and then, you know, it was a long flight. Uh, I, I was, I was wasted tired, you know, mm -hmm. but I'd been studying and listening to the tunes and it's dude, it was like 17 songs. It was a full set. And plus you got newer songs too. Yeah. And they, they, um, throughout that first day, Wolf was sending me information and updating the set list and making sure that I, I wouldn't be singing too many Mark songs. So even though they had about three or four of them in there, they wanted me to do, mm -hmm. which makes sense. You know, I was going to try to get away with just all the Udo, just send me the Udo stuff, man. It'll be. And he was like, I see what you're trying to do there. <laughs> we have to play the song, you know, from the new record. And he's right. He's right. Um, so yeah, uh, Wolf and Uva guitar player, they come by my room and I'm studying and I'm like, at first time I'd met them, I said, let's call Mark. They call Mark. They put Mark on the phone. Guy is the coolest guy ever. Mm -hmm. And I've been a fan of his forever. And he's a legend. Mm -hmm. he guy's a legend, uh, in like the New York, New Jersey area. He's a legend. TT quick, you know, uh, fans saw those ads in every hard rock magazine I picked up in 1983, 84, 85. Right. So crazy, uh, to get to talk to him. He was so sweet. And, uh, I wanted him to know, don't worry, I'm going to do my best. And I'm a fan of yours. And I know that I'm in your house. Yeah. And he was appreciative. And he said, I, you're saving our whole camps, butt by being here. So thank you. And, and I was just like, at that point, I was like a lot of like stress kind of started to roll off my back. Yeah. And, uh, I did the next day I did a full, we did the whole set for sound check. Wow. We did 90 minutes, <laughs> 90 minutes sound, the whole set. And they just wanted to see what I sounded like on all those tunes. And, uh, this is not a brag. They were smiling ear to ear. I go, what are you guys smiling at? <laughs> they were happy. They were just happy. And then you did 90 minutes later on that night. Yeah, a few hours later, we did the set, whole set. And how many shows did you play on that uh, that tour? Okay, so I did four in a row. Okay. And uh, the first show was in Jim Thorpe, uh, mm -hmm. Pins, Pins Peak, uh, Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. And I did the whole set. Uh, Mark had been calling the next morning to Wolf, and I heard later on that, that uh, Mark's coming to the show and getting him back on the bus with us. And he's going to, uh, they, they altered the set. Like, so for the lat, the, the three out of the four, 
So the first night is just me. The mm-hmm. rest of it, the, the three, the three other days, were me and Mark tag team team in the set, where he, because at that time he had had like four or five days to chill. Right. And he had gotten to go home, and he had was do, almost done with his Z pack. He was in the middle of the steroid treatment, la la la, and he gets on stage and just kills it. He he kept saying, "I'm not a hundred percent. I'm not a hundred percent. I'm glad you're here." And he's just, you know, we're both hacking up green, uh, you know, gummy bears, and um, so it, it was a sight to see these two guys just like. <sighs> no, okay. that's that, it's so cool, and it must be something in the water here in Detroit because I just saw John Bush and Arbor Saint, and then a couple days later, you're now touring and singing with them. So here's what John Bush had to say about it. He said, uh, this is a text from John. Uh, Jason's an awesome person. He saved my and the band's ass. He came literally one day notice, and because he was an old school Saint fan, he was already ready. I'm eternally grateful, and he will forever be part of the Armored Saint story. So that was a pretty nice uh, message from John. He's the best. And He's so is it, is it the same type of thing uh, with, uh, with the Armored Saint guys? He, well, the the... There's a little bit of a difference in story by way of I met Armored Saint uh, February 21st of 1985, just to be a nerd, <laughs> when they were supporting Metallica on Ride the Lightning. So Wasp was also, Wasp was on, in that tour as also well, yeah. on that tour as well. Yeah. They had canceled. They had actually canceled uh, that night in, uh, here in Austin. Uh, but 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 Armored Saint and Metallica did play. Now, um I met those guys so long ago and, you know, me and John became pen pals uh, and uh, just stayed in touch uh, off and on. Not, you know, not close. We're not we don't call each other every day, but we, we used to speak like once a year, every couple of years, once uh, the, the world got cell phones and uh, we would run into each other sometimes. And I'd go see Armored Saint throughout the years whenever they'd come through town with whoever they were with and we kept up right right um so it was different because i felt like i knew these guys better than the accept guys Mm -hmm. just by that default it's not it fit a little bit better right off the get a little bit more family oriented because you know i the accept guys i had just gotten to know them and you know what they made me feel like family on day one right it's no sweat off of the except dudes that I know I've known the armored saint guys like closer mm. as, as like bro down kind of shit than I did with except. So that's no one's fault. It just was weird. Um, I think except had like a, a three man list and it, and, it, and armored saint had one, one man list. Like John sang Sunday night a week ago. Sunday night they were in like Philly or I can't remember where they yeah, were. Yeah, because they but... played here on a Friday and they they were playing every single day. Oh, so right, somewhere Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. So Sunday night, wherever they were, uh, John comes off stage going, "Yeah, nope." Now I'm gonna be honest. Uh, he sounded fantastic here in Detroit. He's killer. Yeah, and he's even one of the when best he, singers. yeah, I know it. I agree 100. percent He's been one of my. This is gonna sound weird idols for yeah. a long time he's a powerhouse he's a super so nice guy yeah so good and he's one of the best dudes ever um so he gets on you know they go on at eight their set is 50 minutes so by two hours from the time that they said thank you good night my phone rang because my phone rang at 10 mm. texas time yeah and they're east coast so you know it's 11 there it's 10 here my phone rang i'm on the phone with joey and i'm like you're kidding me. I just did this. Dude, I was in my robe on the couch with the dog in my lap and my wife, and we're watching TV. And I, I'm just like, yeah, that was pretty cool singing with Except. That was cool. It's, you know, a couple weeks had gone by. And here I am getting a call to go do the same thing with Armored Saint. And I'm like, uh, what is <laughs> happening? And I said, you know, what's happening is these singers are getting back out to the eastern seaboard and they're coming down with some crud. Mm hmm. And I don't like that. I don't want any singers to get sick. I don't. But it's so, it's I, I so wish... cool at this stage of, uh, of the game of your life, of your career, when uh, people are calling you and you're going out there and helping out these bands, uh, idols and friends of yours. Yeah. That's yeah, a, it's that's weird. A great it's compliment. A, it is a great compliment. I feel super blessed. 
And um, I'm, I'm excited to be able to help uh, anyone who needs me for anything in the name of, of rock and roll and heavy metal because I, that's what I do. Yeah. Now, now, the fact, back to what I was saying, I, it, it hurts me to, the, for, to hear about a singer who's, who's, who's uh, basically come down with a handicap and can't use their voice in danger of a crew and a band not being able to work in the middle of a tour. That's a nightmare. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Now, I think that it's really great that, that, John, that John was on the tour the whole time. And that Mark came back so quick that it was like he was on the tour the whole time. Yeah. Because I got to share the stage with both of those guys. Because John was John was coming out at the top of the set and going, "Hey man, what's up? It's John Bush here." And the crowd goes crazy. Wow, he's wow. John's gonna sing. And then he says, "Well, the rumors are true. I'm still not a hundred percent. And my buddy Jason's gonna take over for me. And you guys give the give him." all your love. And, you know, he basically was announcing the band and bringing me in red carpet. And I'm just like, Oh my God, my heart is just crying with joy. And this is the best I could ever hope for because he's telling his fans, I, I, I endorse this dude. Mm, yeah. So you guys better not be dicks. Right. Kind of a thing. Beautiful, beautiful moment in history. Uh, the fourth night, we were uh, in uh, Huntington, Long Island, Huntington, New York, at the Paramount, most beautiful venue I've ever been in. Mm. Uh, I think sold out, maybe sold out. Uh, I know a couple of the nights I did were sold out. And um, and uh, he came out and announced the band. And then I kind of let the cat out of the bag a few songs into the set that we might have a secret. Might have a secret guest come out here later in the crowd. Wow, what? You know. And so the last two songs, I'm like, all right, we got two more, you know, should we, should we do something cool now? You know, can we, and then all of a sudden I hear Bush and my in ears coming out going, it's time to stop messing around, you know, <laughs> Bush comes out, and we both tag team the last two songs. Yay. Happy, happy. What did you, uh, what did you think of a uh, wasp set? Did you get I, I love wasp. Yeah. I, I love wasp. I think that they, are a legend. Blackie alone is a legend himself. I don't know if he realizes how many black metal, death metal, and corpse paint bands that he has influenced with the tone of his voice, his dark thematic uh, approach, and just stage antic, and the whole, the whole, the cod piece, the whole thing is influential. Just as much as Gene Simmons, just as much as Kiss, I could say, King Diamond, and Alice Cooper, just as much as those guys is an influence upon so many it's like multi-genre stuff going on even though it's it's still kind of leaning into butt rock but it has a lot of double kick yeah you know, a lot of double bass and heavy his voice is so you know i love it so much um love the set list uh it was really great to see wasp uh, a couple of different bands broken teeth and uh, godzilla motor company two bands of mine over the years have gotten to open for versions of wasp as they came to texas and i gotta say the stuff that's happening right now on this tour with wasp and armored saint wasp doesn't sound hadn't sound any better than this this is tough it sounds so heavy and cool yeah they they sounded great here in detroit uh i know that you, you you saw frank bellow and uh he said uh he said jason was so comfortable with the lyrics he uh he had a notepad but he didn't even seem to need it uh, I thought he was great. That's what Frank Bello said. He, uh, you guys saw him, of course, at that show in uh, Long Island. Yeah, so so nice of uh, Frank. Uh, he's always been a great guy. Uh, my band Watchtower opened for Anthrax in 1986 on the band's first uh, U.S. tour. I think it was. Uh, it was. Uh, it wasn't. God, what was the record? Uh, it doesn't matter. What early, early it wasn't Fistful of Metal. It was the second record. Yeah, Steady of Four Spread, or something. No, Spreading, spreading the Disease. disease. Okay, gotcha. Spreading the Disease. Yeah. yeah, it was that tour. And uh, he was brand new. He was a kid. Yeah. Because he's Charlie's nephew. We so all were. Younger <laughs> dude. Right, right. We were all punks, right. Yeah, guy, 86, I was 21. Yeah, I was 17, I think, yeah. Wow, crazy, dude. Exactly. Anyway, so Frank's always been great. He's been on my podcast like three times, so it was great to to see him in person. Yeah, Frank is the best. He was just uh, on mine uh, last week, and uh, just a, a super good guy. But um, 
Uh, they got this uh, cheapy uh, Zoom here, so I'm going to have to uh, cut things short here in just a second. But I just wanted to say uh, uh, thank you for coming on. Uh, you were so kind when I I, I, I text you because I think that people are interested because you've done this now with the two bands. And it's it's such an interesting story. And, and, and people are like looking to you to like not only, you know, for the fans, but also for the bands and the camps and everything like that. So that's that's, that's a cool honor. It, it definitely is and was, and, um, you know, it's not like, uh, I I'm, it's not like I'm, I'm putting business cards in the hat. You know what <laughs> I mean? It's not like, I, I think that it's, it's great that, uh, it, you know, I was either a suggestion to someone like it was with the accepting. And I'm also lucky to call the saint guys friends and they 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 said it was no question they admit, probably because of the accepting because of the accepting they were like oh we just just call jason it's no brainer because he's family yeah the dominoes fell in the right way for sure yeah that's right so, yeah so uh i feel extremely blessed and and you know what man thank you for having me today on your show well i appreciate it the uh, guy with the coolest uh email address in all of rock and roll i have to say that so <laughs> well thanks my phone number used to have 2112 in it but it doesn't anymore uh, mike, mike portnoy was the was uh, the most angry friend i had when i lost that phone number so yeah jason thanks so much for the time and uh, uh i really appreciate it yeah of course it was a pleasure